New research aimed at understanding the impact of social media on adolescent brains is already showing fascinating results. The National Institutes of Health study is following more than 11,000 children over a decade. In early testing, researchers found significant differences in brain chemistry for kids who had at least seven hours of screen time a day compared to kids who use screens less. Anderson Cooper spoke to the researchers for last night's 60 Minutes. Until recently, it was impossible to see what happens inside a young brain when a person is focused on a mobile device. Look. But now, scientists at the University of California, San Diego, have hacked that problem. How often do you have young people come in for the MRIs? So as often as we possibly can. Uh, Dr. Kara Baggett is an investigator on that $300 million NIH study. Her team is scanning teenagers' brains as they follow Instagram, the most popular social media app. When we met 18-year-old Roxy Shimp, she was about to participate in Dr. Baggett's study. How much time do you actually spend on screens? I check my phone pretty regularly, I'd say. What's pretty regularly? Uh, every at least 10 to 20 minutes. Is that a conservative estimate? Probably. She can't take her phone into the MRI because of the powerful magnets in the machine. So a mirror has been placed above her face to allow her to look across the room at a movie screen displaying images from her Instagram account. This way, Dr. Baggett can see exactly which parts of the brain's reward system are most active while using social media. So you can actually see a part of the brain light up when you're feeling good? Yes, from in the scanner. In the scanner? Yeah. Based on her data and the results from other studies, Dr. Baggett is among scientists who believe screen time stimulates the release of the brain chemical dopamine, which has a pivotal role in cravings and desire. So you're more likely to act impulsively um, and use social media compulsively instead of like checking yourself. You want to keep on it to keep getting the good feelings. Psychologist and best-selling author Lisa Demore is a CBS News contributor and is here with more on this. Lisa, good morning. Good morning. So we won't know the full results from this study for quite a while, but does anything concern you from what we see thus far? Well, here's what we do know. We do know that social media is incredibly compelling. We know that it triggers the reward centers in the brain. And this is true for grown-ups too, not just right. teenagers and kids. So we know that. We also know that digital technology already disrupts things that are important for healthy development. So sleep, one-on-one -on -one interactions that are face-to-face, -face, uh, learning how to focus on one's schoolwork, physical activity. So we should already start to be drawing some lines around digital technology just to protect normal and healthy development. And so much is about guidelines. We know that now pediatricians recommend that children under the age of two not have any screen time. What are the guidelines for children uh, up through adolescence, though? I think that the way we want to think about it is that there's no simple answer, right, that we wish there were. I recommend that we really make priorities about what are we trying to protect. So we're trying to protect sleep. We're trying to protect family time. We're trying to protect focus. So I think the guidelines should flow from there. Um, children need a lot more sleep than people appreciate. Elementary school children need 11 hours a night. Middle schoolers need 10 hours a night. High schoolers need nine hours a night. Mm. So if we even do that, that's one heck of a guideline. And the thing is, it's not just total time. It's that we're creating a habit of distractions. So yes. We're training our kids to keep interrupting themselves, which means they can't do anything hard because they seek that interruption. That's right. Focus is a muscle that we build. And it doesn't matter if someone interrupts you or you interrupt yourself, it still disrupts your focus. You have a new book coming out about anxiety and depression, specifically among young girls. Mm -hmm. How does social media contribute to that? Is there data that shows that it's causal? We don't yet have causal data, but what we do have are some longitudinal studies that have actually looked at the trajectory through sleep, that when high schoolers get phones that disrupt their sleep, Subsequently, they go on to have higher rates of depression, higher rates of emotional fragility. So we don't yet have a certainty, but, but we know, are in that direction. I mean, I hear this from parents all the time, suicide rates being up. They know someone that their kids go to school with, depression, anxiety. What's causing that? I think we don't really know, and I think simple answers are appealing, but they're probably not accurate. We want to look at this in broad scope and think about a lot of factors that may be causing stress and anxiety to go up for our kids and making it important that we take steps to protect them 
from a lot of things, social media may be one of them. Yeah. And since I've already read an early copy of her book, I know there's a lot of answers in it. Yeah. <laughs> When's it coming out? Well, it comes out February 12th. Anyone with teenage kids who sees those weather patterns of their moods change quickly, you know that social media is playing a little bit of a role. Lisa DeMore, thank you so much. You're for welcome. This. Thanks for having me.